Hello there and happy new year to you. A very, very happy 2024 for all of you. I hope this year brings you lots of good luck, lots of health, happiness and success in your OET. And with that in mind, I've put together five top tips to help you do extremely well in your OET studies. My name's Sona, I'm your online OET tutor with Bose Learning and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. Thank you very much for joining me today. So what do I want you to do? What do I want you to focus on? Now there's lots of things you can be doing of course to do well in your OET but I've just kind of condensed down a few essentials that I'd really like you to put your mind to and these are going to help you in your studies. Let's start with the listening subtest and we're going to be focusing on each subtest in turn. As I say, these are just a summary of things that you can be doing. I've got loads of videos, over 250 for you to check out, which go into much more detail and give you much more practice. But let's begin with the first of my listening skills tip. And that is to use the OET practice materials available on OET.com. Now, what I want you to do when you're listening to these is do the tests, obviously, don't do them all in one go, but space them out, do the first one, for example, and then go back and look at the answer key and look at the transcript. That's going to be so important for you because that will help your ear and your eye focus along together. And then after a few weeks, go back and do it again. See if you can find all the answers that you missed out the first time round. And you may think, oh, but I remember these the second time round. Well, yeah, maybe you do. But maybe also your listening skills have improved over that time. So hopefully that's how it's going to be. So do use the practice materials on the OET website. Don't do them in one go, but space them out and use them really cleverly. As well as doing that, so as I say, space them out, don't do it in one go. Don't just get through them and say, oh no, I've got no more material. Have a listen to different healthcare podcasts, news items and documentaries. And this is really, really important. Listen to a variety of English accents because perhaps the country where you are at in, at the moment, where you're living in at the moment, just speaks American English and you might not be so familiar with British English um, or Australian English. And of course, the exam focuses mostly on those two, although they do use other kinds of English as well. Um, so get familiar with different kinds of English. So listen to podcasts from Australia, podcasts from the UK, podcasts from India as well. So use different kinds of English to get your ear trained. And practice active listening by taking notes during your practice. And the reason I say this is because you have to combine two skills when you're doing your listening. You have to listen and write the answer, especially in part C. You have to listen, read the different options and then choose the best one. So practice active listening skills. Take notes to the podcast as you listen. Write a little summary because that's only going to help your listening and your writing skills as well. So those are some top tips for listening to improve your grade in the listening subtest. Okay, let's move on to reading then. The first thing I do is to focus on strategies. So familiarise yourself with the different question types that could come up. And again, I've got lots of videos on this, so do check those out. So be familiar, be ready, know what to expect and know what strategy to employ for each of the different parts, because it's a different strategy for A, which is reading really quickly, skimming and scanning. And it's a different strategy for B and C, where you're doing slightly different things. So do familiarise yourself with that. Then reading is a kind of marathon and you have to improve your speed. It's a long distance thing. 
So you've got to get used to reading quickly, but effectively. So you're under time pressure. So you don't want to compromise your comprehension by reading too quickly and not understanding what you're reading. Um, And the way to do that is by practicing. So maybe be kind to yourself, give yourself longer than 15 minutes to begin with for part A, give yourself 20 minutes, then bring that down and down and down and try and do it in 18 minutes if you can. And then lower and lower and try and do it under 15 minutes if you can, maybe 13. Um, So give yourself that extra bit of leeway for the test to do even better. So practice reading, practice your time skills. And again, you can utilize OET sample materials for this, um, but also use other kinds of things as well. Go on to websites that talk about healthcare, healthcare journals, read that. Read all the time. Read everyday things. Read As you're treating your patient and you're giving them some cream, read the back of that. What does the cream, what does the information leaflet about the cream tell you? Um, And the reason I say that is because I had a lovely group of um, nurses from Ireland who were training to be, they were qualified nurses, of course, in their own countries, but um, they were working as healthcare um, assistants in Ireland. And a word came up, um, a colleague was teaching them at the time, And the word was ointment. And they said, oh, you know, what does ointment mean? And he said, what do you mean? You use ointment every single day with your patients in the um, elderly people's home. Um, And ointment, of course, is a kind of cream. And they just hadn't read the tub of cream that they used. They knew it was ointment, but they hadn't put two and two together. So read everything. Read, read, read everything you can. Okay, let's move on to the writing subtest. Now, what should you be doing here? Well, first of all, practice the different letter forms. So you could, of course, get a discharge letter. You could get a referral letter and possibly a transfer letter. So learn all of those and look at what's required for each of those. Focus in on identifying what's important in the case notes to the reader, not to you maybe, but to the reader. What does the reader need to do? And then focus on that and make sure that's clear. And use the writing criteria on OET.com to self-assess and improve. So if you know what the examiners are looking for, it's much easier, of course, to give it to them. So do check out the writing criteria. And I've got a long guide on this as well um, in one of my videos. So please check that out because that's going to help you as well. And then the last subtest, of course, is the speaking. And for this one, it's the case of practice. So engage in mock speaking tests with a study partner, with a family member, um, or better still, with a qualified OET tutor. And that's going to help build your confidence and get you ready for test day. When you are practicing and on test day, please, please, please make sure you listen and respond to your patient. Don't just focus in on the question card in your hand. Listen to what your patient is saying and respond to that. That's so important, as you would in real life to be honest. Um, And a great thing, which I know you hate doing, but it's really worthwhile if you can bear to listen to yourself, record what you're doing, and then you can go back and you can evaluate it, again, using the criteria on the OET website um, or with a tutor. So I know we all hate listening to our own voices, um, but you know, it's really going to help you. Um, So try, try it, try it just once or twice and see how you go. It's not so bad, honestly. I do it all the time because I have to listen to myself on this. And if I can do it, then you can do it as well. Um, And then some general tips for you just to round up. Um, Time management. um, So develop a study schedule. Um, really do that. Don't just think, oh, I'll study a bit here, bit here, bit, you know, after work, bit in between picking up the kids. No, sit down, draw up a study schedule and allocate a specific time for each subtest. Tick it off. You'll feel so good once you've done that. 
Um, take time practice tasks to sim stimulate exam conditions and improve time management. Again, do that towards the end of your study time. Uh, do it at the beginning to see where you are. Do it in the middle and then do it at the end. And once you've done a test, don't just abandon it. Go back to it again and again. Look over previous work you've done. Rewrite letters if you can. See if you can do it better. Um, see if you can, you know, do it with fewer mistakes, maybe. So go back over previous work. Look at all the vocabulary you spelt wrong, maybe in listening part A. Make sure you're not doing that wrong again. Um, so please go back and, you know, use that and use that in your time management skills as well. So develop a good routine, basically. So incorporating these tips, I am sure will help your study routine and will help you prepare more effectively. Hooray for the OET exam. Um, do go out and check my channel. Um, I was trying to think what the name was that. The channel, not my blog. But you can check my blog too, of course. Um, but check my channel. As I say, I've got over 200 videos, 250, I think it is. Uh, 271, it says here, lots of different things. So if you've only got 10 minutes um, of practice, then have a look at my 10 minute um, OET guides, um, practice, study guides and practice. Um, if you have longer, then maybe do my ear training or, you know, look at how you write a letter of transfer. Loads of different things on there. So do go and check that out. And as I say, you know, be consistent, dedicate the time, put the effort in. I know you want to succeed and I know you're going to do this. Um, so just with a little bit of exam strategy, planning and hard work you can do it so good luck i hope it all goes really well um i think you can do it just believe in yourself um and keep going keep motivated and come back and visit me again um and hopefully i'll have lots of interesting things for you that's good that are going to help you succeed in your oet hope to see you really soon have a lovely 2024 um, and yeah, see you again very soon. Bye bye.